welcome. My name is Marie Strauch. I am the educator with Your New School. Today's webinar is going to cover the Medipool Turbo e-file. Your Medicool Turbo e-file includes a mandrel, three sanding bands, and a diamond bit. Some of its features, it is a 20,000 RPM. It is a has a lightweight handpiece. It's very quiet, very compact, no vibration or very little to no vibration. It has a variable speed control dial, a locking chuck. It fits all 332 bits. The handpiece cradle is built into the base. It is a 110 240 volt. And it also has a forward and reverse option. So e-file maintenance. So you definitely want to maintain your e-file so that it lasts a long time. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you're reducing dust. Using an e-file will produce dust which can enter the handpiece and damage it. To avoid this, you want to wipe down your handpiece after each use. Also use a small brush to clean the handpiece and the bit holder as well as the cord plug-in. Also keep a blank pin in your handpiece when not in use. This will help prevent dust from entering your handpiece. Also don't drop your e-file. This can break internal parts and damage your bits. Keep the e-file in a secure place on your manicure table and make sure the handpiece is secure in the cradle when not in use. Do not crimp your cord. Um, when cords are crimped or bent, this causes the fibers inside the cord to break or fray, and they won't make a full connection, weakening the power of your e-file. So keep your cords as smooth and in a natural bend to avoid crimping. So really just take a look at how the cords were packaged when you first get your e-file. If you are not somebody who's gonna be keeping this e-file on your station, you're traveling a lot, if you're a traveling nail tech, so just really make sure that you're not coiling or crimping your cords, otherwise they may fray. So let's talk bits and sanitation. So sanitation, your bits will need to be properly cleaned to prevent breakdown or rust, as well as for client safety. You wanna wash your bits with soap and water and use a brush to help remove any debris, and then disinfect or sterilize with your preferred products. Bits should not be left in the liquid any extra time, and then make sure you dry all your bits before using them in your e-file, as well as before storing them in their proper containers. Types of bits. So we have metal bits, which are also known as carbide. After each use, you wanna clean your bits to remove debris from the surface, either by washing with a brush and soap and water, or by immerging them in acetone for about 10 minutes. Remember, acetone does not replace a disinfectant. It's just a solvent used to clean and remove any debris in the flutes of your carbide bits. After cleaning, completely immerse your bits in a liquid disinfectant. Metal bits feature indented cutting flutes, um, which cut pieces of nail enhancement material as opposed to just grinding it. Special wire brushes are used to clean the flutes after each use and before they are submerged in a disinfectant solution. Um, and again, acetone is great to help break down that debris before disinfecting. Diamond bits. These bits do not have flutes to trap product. So a simple washing and scrubbing should remove any product residue before you are placing them into your disinfectant solution. And ceramic bits. Ceramic bits, um, to, you need to remove a portion of the bit that you used on your client. And to do this, you're going to hold the bit vertically on the surface of a coarse file. And with the machine on, you'll press down, you'll press your bit onto the file until you pass the portion that you used. So it's very similar to sharpening a pencil. So you want to, and then you can completely um, immerse your bit in an approved disinfectant. I personally do not use ceramic bits. Um, I prefer carbide and diamond bits. I only have one that I will show you on camera because again, I don't really use ceramic. Um, but if that's the product of choice that you would like to use, um, just know that you do have to shake them down and then clean them. Um, some bits will have color coding on them, little bands, sometimes they're painted on. Um, on average, the color coding, 
you're going to want to read the manufacturer's color coding, but for the most part, red means fine, blue is a medium grit, green is coarse, and black is extra coarse. They even have extra, extra coarse, or extra, extra, extra coarse. Um, I don't really have a need for those type of bits, but if you do, um, just follow your manufacturer wherever you're purchasing your bits, and they'll let you know what color means fine, medium, or coarse. Sanding bands. They are made of a sandpaper-like material for natural nail etching and light shaping. Sanding bands are used on natural nails and cannot be disinfected, so they should be discarded after each use. Sanding bands fit over a mandrel bit, which can be disinfected in the same manner as your other metal bits. And then storage, you wanna store all your bits in a clean, dry container until you're ready to use them. Bits should be replaced when they no longer refine the product in a timely manner. With daily use, bits can last anywhere from two to four months, and then you're gonna to wanna to replace them. Using your MediCool Turbo e-file. So using the e-file can speed up your service, but it takes extra care to avoid over-filing. You wanna hold your e-file like a pen or a pencil to use it more proficiently. So you wanna use the correct speed and grit. Use a medium coarse bit for finish filing work. Do your finish filing at no higher than 7,000 to 10,000 RPMs with no lower than a medium grit. You wanna work the e-file from one side of the nail to the other ending near the proximal nail fold. Be aware of your pressure. Using too much pressure can cause you to reduce the strength of your enhancements. You don't wanna file away your arc and your support. Be sure to maintain the curved sculpture that you put into the nail um, for your strength. When you're first using your e-file, you want to apply a slightly thicker layer of product. This is going to give yourself a little buffer. This is going to help protect the nail and avoid accidental damage, giving you more confidence to file more quickly. If applying traditional polish or gel polish, do not finish behind beyond a 180 grit. Um, doing extra filing when you're just going to apply a color coating to your extension or to your uh, nails will extend your service time for no reason. Also, anything higher than, than a 180 grit, your gel products, gel polishes will not adhere to the nail. It's too smooth of a surface if you go any higher than a 180. So which bit to use and why? So mandrels and sanding bands, these are used for natural nail prep at a low speed. Diamond bits, these are also used for natural nail prep and the cuticle area at a low speed. Your metal bits or your carbide bits, these are used to remove bulk from your enhancement. And you can use this at a medium speed. We do not use metal carbide bits on natural nails. All bits come in fine, medium, and coarse, and like I said earlier, they also come in extra coarse or extra, extra coarse, if that is something that you will need. Next, I wanna talk just a little bit about the Gelish Go file. So this is our newest file available through your new school, so you can either purchase the MediCool or the Gelish Go file. This e-file, um, it has 35,000 RPMs with True Torque. It provides a smooth, quiet, vibration, free hand piece. It is acetone resistant, so the actual casing and the docking station is acetone resistant. It is compact and lightweight. It is cordless, so this is a, a piece that you can bring with you. You just recharge it, um, and then once it's fully charged, it will run for eight to 10 hours. Um, also, if the battery does go dead because you forgot to charge it or put it back in its docking station, you can put the e-file in the docking station and use it with the powered cord. It does also has a variable speed control. It can switch from forward and reverse. There's the illuminating power indicator to let you know that it's on. It also has the auto switch between 110 and 220 volts. And then it has the auto off um, option to protect against overload. So if it's if it's sensing any overloading, the unit will just shut itself off. And then it also fits all 30, about 332 bits. So I am going to show you both on camera so that you can see both e-files. 
So for more information on eFiles, you'll contact the account executives at your new school. And then for future webinars, you would contact myself and there is my email information. I'm gonna flip my camera on and we'll go ahead and start using some of our e-files. All right, so here are a few of the bits that we're going to use today. Um, and I do have a couple of different bits. So I have my card by bits. These are in fine, medium, and coarse. Um, these are safety bits. So safety bits have a rounded top so that when you are getting near the cuticle, you're not going to nick your client's cuticle. So these are called safety bits. Um, you can purchase card by bits that have the flat top that don't have the dome use what you're comfortable with. This is my one and only ceramic bit because again, I don't use ceramic bits, but I just purchased one to have on camera. So I don't use them. Other carbide bits, um, and it really doesn't matter the color, whether they're gold, silver, um, these ones are black, they have iridescent ones, they're all the same. Um, it's just your preference of finish. This bit is a, this is, these two bits are from the Go File, the Jellish Go File. This is their cuticle bit. This is probably my favorite bit. I absolutely love this bit. And then this is their radius cone bit. So this works in both reverse and forward. So it's good for lefties and righties. And this really will take down your enhancement and smooth out your surface of the nail. So this is great for grinding down. So these are all for grinding. This is all for only on top of your enhancements. We don't use these on natural nails with the exception of the cuticle bit because this is so fine. Ceramic bits are great for natural nail etching and smoothing. Again, I don't use them. Diamond bits are used on the natural nail. They're great for cuticle area. These are all of my other cuticle bits and they come in all different shapes and sizes. And then these cone cuticle or carbide bits. These are great for smoothing underneath the nails um, as your enhancements grow out. If you want to buff down the natural nail, if there is any lifting, same with your cone. And then sanding bands. So sanding bands also come in fine, medium, and coarse. You'll know just by looking and feeling the surface of your sanding band. So I have the medium on this sanding band and these just slide on and off. Um, they are pretty tight. Sometimes I need to use a cuticle nipper and I just kind of fray the corner to pull these off. And they come in all, all different kinds. Um, they're all the same. Um, it just depends on the grip. So these are just different placements of the grip or these little rivets to hold your sanding band in place, but they're all the same. Now let's talk about, I'm gonna move these out of the way and we'll grab our e-file. Get that on camera so you can see the Medi cool. So here is the Medi cool. It has your cradle to hold your handpiece when not in use. You have your uh, dial and then this is what controls your variable speed of your RPMs. Your handpiece plugs into the front of the unit. So you'll plug your handpiece into the unit. And then you have your cord that plugs into your outlet and then into your base. And then your forward and reverse is on the side. To change out your bit. So this is a locking chuck. So it will just, you just twist and slide out your pin. So it comes with a blank pin. When you're not using your e-file, when it's not in use, always keep the blank pin in and then lock your chuck. This is to prevent dust from getting inside your handpiece when not in use. So we'll unlock that, slide out our pin, place our sanding band in, and I did apply some a product to an artificial hand. So grab that. Pop this one off and grab. So 
so this has an acrylic overlay that has not been filed at all. So we, I just applied acrylic and have done no filing at all. These have already been applied, hand filed, no e-file was used on these, but I kept the polish on. So we are going to, so that you can see the difference between a fine, a medium and a coarse how it breaks down over the polish so it's something more visually easy to see. But for natural nail prep, um, you can either use the sanding band or you can use the diamond bits. I actually prefer diamond bits when I'm prepping the nail, um, but it is preference. When you are doing, I should probably switch this out to fine. I'm gonna switch my sanding band and do a fine. I like to do fine, I use my Koopa sanding bands and I have a whole box of fine. This is what I use for a natural nail prep. I'm going to turn my unit on and I'm just going to put it on a low RPM. And when I'm prepping the natural nail, I just do, and you want to hold your e-file like a pencil. I use my pinky to steady my hand and I just do little etching on the surface of the nail just to roughen up the surface of the nail to prep it for my artificial nail enhancement. So just very light. You're just lightly feathering the surface of the nail. You don't want to push too hard on your e-file. If you push too hard down, it's stopping my e-file from rotating um, because that's at a low RPM. Turn my unit off, unlock my chuck, switch my bit, turn that back on. And then the same thing when you're using your diamond bit, just very gentle, smooth, little etching into the natural nail. So we're gonna move to this polish now. So with my sanding band or with my carbide bit, or my diamond bit, I should say, this is not really doing much of anything other than roughing up the surface of my top coat. So this would be great. I'm just going to turn this up just a bit. This would be great when somebody comes in to change their gel polish. Just grab your diamond bit and smooth out the surface of their top coat. Just rough up that surface so that you can soak off their gel polish. Or you can use the sanding band for that. Now, if you are going to be using your carp or your ceramic, same thing, ceramic I use for natural nail. It's more of a buffing, it's just an etching. You're not gonna get too much removal of product. Again, this is just roughening up the surface of that top coat to break that down before soaking. And then for cuticles, I'm going to put this cuticle bit in. I'm going to wait to do cuticle with my go file. I love the go file. It's my favorite file. The turbo is great too. The turbo is a lot, is lighter. It's so tiny. It takes up very little space on your nail station. Um, I just like the go file because I can clip it to my belt when I'm doing pedicures and I can travel with it. Okay, so let's talk about our carbide bits. So I don't really ever use the coarse bit. Um, I do use the coarse bit when I'm removing an enhancement. So if a client comes in and says they no longer want their acrylics or hard gels or um, their enhancement, we're gonna be soaking off or removing. I start with my coarse bit because this is gonna take a lot of product off very quickly. So I'm gonna turn that up to a little higher of a RPM. And I'm going to, so when you're near the cuticle area, and this is going to take a lot, so this is my course. And I kind of make the letter T, so I'm going to go, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to go from my right to my left. If you are left-handed, you're going to put your machine in reverse and go in the opposite direction. So I come in and I do the surface of the nail. Always keep your e-file moving. And then to 
to really remove bulk, you can come down the surface of the nail. And this is going to take more off. So let's say, let's say they want to change their shape. So I'm going to come in and I'm just going to carve down. So I'll use my coarse bit to really remove a lot of bulk. Just, right now I'm just getting all that top coat off, smoothing down. I should have my dust collector on. I may turn that on. Dust. So a dust collector, if you are going to be an e-file user, I highly recommend a dust collector. I purchased mine off of Amazon. We don't sell them through your new school. Um, but I did not I did not go high end. Um, I think they paid like $50 for this, maybe even less. But it's just a unit that has pretty much like a vacuum. The client rests their hand on the cushion side. And then this has three fans that will suck the dust into it. And then there's a bag underneath that collects the dust that you empty. Um, this is a great item to have if you are going to be using the e-file. E-files produce a way more dust than hand filing. Um, so to reduce the amount of dust that you're breathing in, a dust collector is great to have as well as wearing a mask um, so that you're not breathing in all of this dust. So I'm going to turn that on. Turn my e-file back on. And we'll go in. And now it's just sucking in all that dust. So for the nail that I did not do any, I just applied the acrylic. I would start with my coarse bit just to really start smoothing out the nail. I love the safety bits because I know I'm not going to get near their cuticle. And then turn your client's hand, adjust it how you need it. And again, just remember, keep that e-file moving. And smooth out your top. Remove that excess bulk. So just to give you an idea of the strength of a coarse bit. I think this is my coarse bit, yeah. So we're going to get right through that polish. gel polish over an acrylic enhancement, when they come in to change, get their fill, you're not soaking off that gel product. If you soak off the gel, you're going to soak off their enhancement. So we don't want to soak off any of the acrylic. So you need an e-file because otherwise you're going to be hand filing for a long time trying to get your gel polish off. So I'm going to switch and show you guys the go file. So some things I love about the go file. Let me move her out of the way, move this out of the way really quickly. So the go file. Let's see if I can stretch this all the way over here. So it's got a little bit larger of a footprint than the Medicool. Um, so the base is a little larger, but this is your docking station or your charging station. It does have a U, uh, USB port, so, and it comes with, or no, it does not come with it. This is for my phone. So I have a short one that I keep on my station, and I just plug it in so I can charge my phone while I'm working. And then this is your outlet cord, and then your unit snaps out. That peg is what is charging your unit. Your forward and reverse is on top. Your variable speed is also on top. 
your hand piece plugs in to the top of the unit as well. And then you have your plastic belt clip that has its holster for your hand piece. And then it has an opening at the bottom, so that's where you're gonna charge. I love this hand piece. It is so tiny. It's about the size of like shh, those kids' Crayola markers when you're holding like the size difference. They're both very lightweight. Um, the Go File is a little heavier in comparison, but not bad. It also has the same locking chuck. This one actually tells you what is the lock and unlock position. Also comes with your blank pin. So we're going to, let's do the radius. So I like the size of this hand piece. Um, I like the way it fits in my hand. And I love that I can just attach the unit to my waist and carry it with me where I go. And then it lights up in the front to show you um, when your battery is fully charged or is dying. So this one's fully charged. But again, you can just keep it, if it was dead, you can just throw it in the docking station and use it plugged in. So we're going to use the radius bit and we are going to, and this is going to take everything off like, so quickly. One swipe and this stuff is coming off. I love this bit. Um, takes a little practice to use this bit, but it's going to get a lot of your product off very quickly. This piece file is a lot stronger than your Medi-Cool. This has 35,000 RPM, which is unheard of in a cordless or wireless cordless um, portable e-file. It's really, really strong. But it also has the round safety bit on top so that so like I'm pushing that on my finger at a pretty high RPM and it's not cutting. Now I'm not going to do this because that will chop all of my skin up. So I'm just going to smooth it out. to use the top portion of your bit. For the body of the nail, you're going to use the midsection. For your free edge, you would use the bottom. So you're angling your bit as you're working. And that's going to help keep your nail in the shape that you need. So your cuticle area, the body, and your free edge. And that's going to help keep that arc. And again, Unlock, remove your bit, clean the top off. So these are locking chucks. Now I do want to show you a non-locking chuck. This is my handpiece from my original Koopa Manny Pro. Um, it's very similar in size to the Medicool. It's a little smaller, but chunkiness and weight it's pretty much like the Medi Cool, but this does not have a locking chuck. So to get your peg out, you have to pull it out, put your next bit in, push it in. When you're done, pull it out. I'm not a fan of that. Um, sometimes I just don't have the strength to get my bits out. So I prefer the locking chuck, but just know that there are hand pieces out there that don't have a locking chuck. Now I do all of my finish filing. Now I can take my diamond bit, throw my diamond bit on here. And I can do some smoothing with my diamond bit and just really smooth out the surface of the nail. After you use your carbide bit to get all that salt out, you want to smooth. I typically do my filing 
my smoothing and buffing, I hand buff. I don't usually do my diamond bits. So as soon as I go in with my carbide bits and get most of that bulk off and smooth it out. So again, cuticle area, the body, and then I'm using the bottom end of that bit. off and then I'll go in with my 180 just to get the nail grooves, the free edge, do some light surface filing where I need it. And then finish with my buffer. would finish cleanse the nail and then polish now your cuticle bit I'm gonna get some of that dust off of my hands now my cuticle bit is my favorite bit um, I don't really since the mannequin really doesn't have a cuticle I will go ahead and my cuticles don't need too much work because they are freshly done but I'll still show you. I'm going to put my cuticle bit in. Give that a good lock. I've got it at a low RPM. So let me just show you. So when you turn it on, it's numbered from 1 to 15. So I'm going to put this at about a 3 for when I'm doing my cuticles. And hopefully I won't nick my polish. So you want to hold it and just gently etch. So you're holding it parallel and I'm just going to just etch around my cuticle and get rid of that dead skin. And then I love this because I get really bad hangnails. So I'll just go in and just clean up and get rid of those hangnails and I'm just light ever so lightly I'm going in and removing you don't want to put too much pressure because remember this is this is a carbide bit and but it's very fine but you don't want to put too much pressure if you put too much pressure whether it's this a carbide bit or even a diamond bit you don't want to be removing the nail you don't want to start chopping away at their natural nail. You're just going in and removing the cuticle and that dead skin. And that's it. So we're just going to go in, go around, hoping, hopefully not making any of my polish. If anything, I'll just re-top coat it. So just getting that dead skin off. And just light etching. That's all I'm doing around the cuticle. Just removing. This is great on toes. It's so tiny. Now you could use the diamond bits as well. This one's my other favorite. So I love these long cylinder ones because you can really just get into the edges of the nail groove get those cuticles off. Don't use the very tip. So don't do this. That's going to hurt your client. I'm not going to do it on my nail. Let me turn it off so I can show you. Um, you don't, you don't want to be coming in here. You're going to gouge them. You want to be pretty flat with the nail. So you're just going to go in and clean up that cuticle and come straight down, straight down. Don't use the tip like a pencil, you're really going to hurt them and you'll gouge out part of their nail and you'll create an indentation. So you don't want to do that to your client. So that's pretty much the use of your e-files. So cleaning, um, I will grab my bristle brush. I will give all of these a good scrub down with soap and water. And then I have the Koopa um, disinfectant, um, ultrasonic disinfectant. So if I just fill the unit with water.
probably not reversing, so I don't have it in front of me, but, um, oh, I do have it. Um, so I use leukocide, so I do a cap full into the little unit, and it's, um, it's just like a little pot, and then it has a timer, and it's ultrasonic. I throw my cuticle nippers in there, my cuticle pushers, all of my bits, and then I let that go for the full time, drain it, dry all the bits, and then they get stored in a container. Um, the ceramic bit, let's really quickly show how we disinfect or shape that down. So you're going to put that in your... I turn this puppy up pretty high, and then I just rub it against the e-file. So you're just like sharpening a pencil. And I even do the top. Get all edges. And you file that down until you've gone past what you've used. And then I'll give this a quick wash with soap and water, disinfect spray, and then you're ready for the next client. But again, I don't use these on clients. I use this only on my webinars, which it's it was a lot fatter than this. It just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it's gone. Then I'll purchase a new one. So that concludes our webinar on our e-file. Again, if you have any questions regarding e-files, purchasing them, please contact your account executives at your new school at 773-445-6956. And then for future webinars, you would contact myself at mariess at yournewschool.com. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.